Hello and welcome to New Planet School. In this video I'm going to quickly talk about how I make these videos. In the past week or so I've gotten numerous questions related to details of how these videos are made. So I thought I'd make a short video just to get it all in one place um, and hopefully help other people make similar videos. Alright, so let's get started. First of all, I use lots of different tools and I've made lots of different choices. So I'm going to go through those different tools systematically to tell you what I'm using and why I have made those different choices. So let me start off with hardware. The hardware that I happen to use starts with um, using a an iMac, a Macintosh computer. That just happens to be what I have. There's no particular reason you'd have to use an iMac, um, but it, it works very, very nicely. Uh, with that, I have a microphone that looks like this. And the one I happen to have is this Logitech microphone. Here it is, right here. And it seems to work pretty fine. It's pretty inexpensive. Um, one person in a comment suggested I get a new mic. I think that probably um, it's more important not to get a new mic. I think the mic is fine. I think that using it well and putting it close to my mouth and adjusting the volume is important. But I think any inexpensive microphone like this um, works fine. There, there are fancier ones out there for sure. Now, a key component uh, so the way that I make these videos is I use this Wacom tablet that allows me to write on the screen like this. And right now I'm writing with a pen that looks exactly like this because this is a, the a picture of the tablet that I have. Um, I never use the mouse, I just use the pen. And it's very nice for just being able to write on the screen. Another feature that's very nice also is that you can program these buttons like Right then, I just change the color of the pin by pushing this little button right here. If I push the top left button uh, right here, I get a red color. And, and if I push this button over here, it clears everything. And so one of the nice things about the Wacom tablet is that not just that you can write, but you have these programmable keys that you can use that go with the workflow of the way you make your videos. So that's a, a key piece of the hardware. Okay, now how about software? There's a lot of different software that's available and a lot that I use. Let me go through that systematically. Uh, the first thing that I start with is a Keynote, which is a presentation software that is on the Apple. So it's on my iMac. It works with my iMac and I use that and you don't have to use presentation software but it comes in handy for the style that I, I particularly use. If you don't have an Apple or you don't like to use Keynote, um, there are other options out there like PowerPoint is probably the one that most people use. In fact, um, at work I use PowerPoint all the time because all the people I work with use PowerPoint. But when I'm at home, I definitely prefer using Keynote and so that's what I use to make this video. But PowerPoint would be um, acceptable as well if you prefer it. Okay, so that's the main um, piece of software. Once the presentation is made, I have to record it. And here I use ScreenFlow to do that. And again, there's a lot of different options. And before I settled on ScreenFlow, I tried a whole bunch of different things. Um, I looked at things like I Show You, iMovie, QuickTime, Camtasia, and other options and ended up settling on ScreenFlow mainly because it has a lot of good features and everything is wrapped up into one piece of software. So for example, QuickTime is great for grabbing things from the screen but doesn't do a lot of editing. iMovie is made for doing editing, not grabbing from the screen, and so forth. And so what's nice about ScreenFlow is that it allows me to record from the screen, do the editing, and upload to YouTube all by staying in the same um, software package. Um, is it perfect? Definitely not. It's got bugs in it. I'm always having to try to go out on the web and figure out how to do things. It's not a perfect, but it's probably among the best that exists today. So, so there's that. Okay, so the next piece of software that I use is called OmniDazzle. 
and that is what I use to actually write on the screen. So OmniDazzle works with a tablet that allows me to do this writing on the screen. Again, there's lots of different options. For example, I also looked at Desk Scribble. That works perfectly fine. If you happen to like that better or one of the other options, that's great. The reason I settled on OmniDazzle for myself is that it has um, sort of a minimal presence. Um, you can see there's this blue dot that moves around and it's pretty small, whereas Desk Scribble has like this big pencil looking thing. So I like to have something smaller. Some, some other software have things on the screen and you can see right now the only thing that's on the screen is the dot. Um, with the exception of, if you go up here to the upper right, you can see when I change pen colors by pushing on my Wacom tablet, you can see that that little thing appears um, up towards the top up here, which, you know, is fine. Maybe a lot of people don't even notice it. So that's why I like OmniDazzle. Lots of fancier things out there. Works perfectly fine for me. Okay, those three pieces of software form sort of the core. They allow me to make a presentation, record and edit it, and be able to write on the screen all simultaneously. They all have to run together. Then I use a bunch of other different types of software for different things. Um, and I list just three of them here. Um, the first is Python, which is a programming language that I use mainly for making graphs because it has a great package called matplotlib, which allows me to do very excellent graphs. And because it's a full-blown programming language, you can basically do anything. There's really no limitation. There's no ceiling on using it. So it's nice to know a programming language that has great plotting packages, especially if you're doing tutorials on mathematical sorts of things. Um, related to that is if I want to put an equation in, I use LaTeX. And I, I claim there's nothing better in the sense that it's extremely simple and it looks better than any other equation editor that I know of. So if I don't want to write out an equation by hand using the, the pen on the tablet with OmniDazzle, I will use LaTeX to get a very beautifully typed um, equation. And I'll show you in a minute exactly how that works if you haven't seen that before. And then lately, I've been starting to use Matt Grapher, which allows you to make very beautiful graphs very quickly and easily. And so sometimes that can be convenient. It's no replacement for Python uh, because Python is a full-blown programming language and Matt Grapher only makes graphs. But, you know, sometimes you just want something that looks pretty good pretty quickly. And Matt Grapher is, uh, is nice, especially if you don't know how to program in Python. Uh, Matt Grapher is basically you can just start using it um, immediately. It's very nice. So, okay, so that is a summary of the hardware and software that I use. So let's look now at how I get the presentation to look like it does. Because even if you had all that software and you started running it, it's not going to look quite like what you see here on this screen because this is very highly customized. And so how do I do that? So the way I do that is in Keynote, I use a fixed template that I use every time for, for every video, and that gives me a very uniform look. Um, and I'll talk about what some of those customizations are in a minute. And as I mentioned earlier, software like Keynote offers many features because it's a presentation software. Um, like, for example, on the previous slide, I, I could show you the hardware first, and then when I was ready, I pulled up the software part. Um, and that's something that's really nice if you're using presentation software. You can make things come and go as you need them so people aren't distracted by things. And, you know, PowerPoint does that too. But that's what's nice about having a presentation software versus writing on a piece of paper or a chalkboard or a whiteboard. Okay, so then uh, let me talk about some of the custom features that I happen to use that if you just started using Keynote on your iMac, you wouldn't necessarily have right away. Um, one of those is I have a movie at the beginning, and so when I pull up the template, I get this movie of the sun rising above the earth every time. It's automatically there. I no longer have to think about it. After that, there's an intro sequence, which is basically the title slide, and the title slide is a, just a solid black background with a specific color of font. I'll talk about colors in a minute. And 
that's automatically there. I simply go in and change the title for the video that I happen to be making. After that slide, all of the slides have a chalkboard background. So it's it's this black background that you see behind these letters is a is a chalkboard. I've got an image of a chalkboard and I just insert it into the template. So every slide that I make, it automatically comes up with a chalkboard background. And that was something that I just put into my template so that I would have that every time. Uh, another nice thing about using the template is you can make things appear every single time. So like for example, there's always a logo down here and that's always um, a nice thing. Um, I don't have to think about that, it's just there automatically. Next, um, I have a custom font. So if you look at this particular font, it looks like handwriting. And if I try to copy this, you'll notice that the font that I'm using looks a lot like my handwriting. And that's because it is my handwriting. I made my own font out of my handwriting. In fact, I made two. And that way, it looks like I am writing on a chalkboard. And that was sort of one of the things I, I wanted to be able to do. And if you want to make your own font, you can go out on the web and, and look around for lots of different um, people are willing to take your handwriting. You basically fill out a, a sheet and scan it in. They give you a font back. You put it in your font directory, and it comes up in all of your software just like Times New Roman or Helvetica or any other font. And so that's, that's um, a really simple thing to do. Okay, and then... Finally, I have a color theme, and this is what my color theme looks like. I have basically these sets of this set of colors, and whenever I want a color, I just pick the one that I want so that everything is sort of constant. Like right now, I'm writing with this color. If I push this, I'm now writing with this color. If I push this, I'm writing with this color, and you can see that this color is the one that's at the top for the title. And, and the logo uses the blue and green, and so there's a common color theme. Anytime I need a color, I just select it from this palette, and that way there's a coherent look to all of the videos. Okay. All right. Let me talk a little bit about some of the other software in, in, in a little bit more detail, as I promised. Let's suppose that I have a video that needs an equation. And a lot of the math ones obviously do, and often I will use, as I said, LaTeX. And so if you're not familiar with that, here's what it looks like. A box comes up like this on your screen, and what you do is you type in the LaTeX commands into the box. And so if you're not familiar with LaTeX, this probably looks um, slightly um, incomprehensible, but it's sort of a language you have to learn. There is a little bit of a learning curve, but it's, it's not too bad. Once you've learned it, you type in these commands. Select a color. If you don't want black, press LaTeX. It. A equation pops up so you can see that it, if it worked or not. And if you like it, you just drag and drop it wherever you want it to be. And you have a beautifully typeset equation, very professional looking, very easy to use. And so that's mainly how I, I do equations if I don't want to hand write it. So next, if I want to make a graph, as I said, the main way that I do that is with Python. And like I said, it's a full-blown programming language, but it has very good plotting capabilities. So one example which I show over here is a, is a plot that I made for one of my trigonometry videos that looks like this. This was for the unit circle, and that was all coded up in Python using um, the matplot lib libraries. And as I said, I'm starting to use um, a little bit of Mac Grapher to um, when I need to do something very simple. But basically, use whatever is needed for the job. These are some of the tools I use for some of the math stuff, but yeah, I'll use whatever I need. Okay, now let's just go through the workflow. This is sort of obvious, but for the people that are total beginners, this might actually be useful. So the main thing that you need to do is make sure when you get started that these three things are on at the same time. You need to be able to write on the screen, record what you're saying with a microphone, and screen flow needs to be um, recording on the screen. Once that happens and everything's going, you open up your keynote presentation and you present it to, to the screen. And once you're done, you simply stop recording. That takes you into ScreenFlow. It asks you if you want to save the file or not. If you like it, 
save it. If you don't, start over. Um, and then you go in and you do a little bit of editing. Um, here's what it looks like to be in ScreenFlow when you're editing. So here's a video that I've made. Um, there are controls over here on the right for controlling things like sound level and, and things like that. And on the bottom, you have a timeline down here. And in this particular case, this is an interesting case because I actually am combining two separate videos. So here's one, the sound is on top and the video is on the bottom and I'm combining it with another clip that I made. Once it's all done, you can then upload it directly to YouTube if, if, if you want to. You can always save it to a file and then upload it, but you can also go directly. And so that's sort of the workflow that I use. Okay, so that's about it. I hope that I answered all the questions that people have been asking. Um, if I didn't hit on something that you're still interested in, um, please let me know, and I'll try to get you that information. Um, and as I mentioned, there's a lot of different options for doing this. And so if you have better ideas or new ideas or, or your own opinion or your own angle, leave your uh, comments uh, so other people can learn from what you're doing. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Okay, and with that, um, thanks for being here, and I'll see you back at New Planet School very soon. Thanks.